attention to the fact that finally the troops are coming home from Afghanistan and uh, that doesn't mean that the struggle is over. We're uh, expressing a desire for a government, pe a government that has peace as a priority, not war. And uh, one of my signs says vote for peace in 2015. The Liberals brought us into the war in Afghanistan and the Conservatives kept us there. So uh, the multiple choice question is, who should you vote for in the next election? Well, we're here today because this is the day when the last troops leave Afghanistan. So this is Canada's largest war and the Canadian government is using the opportunity you know, to try and 
further push its agenda of war and aggression and that all international problems should be solved through violence, through war and aggression. So, so you know, this on this day, which is 12 years after Canada entered an illegal and unjust war in which, you know, thousands, we don't even know how many people of Afghanistan have died, how many people have been forced into being refugees. Uh, we know anyone who opposed the occupation of their country is called a terrorist and can be summarily executed through drone warfare. And this 12 years has really seen uh, a further development of lawlessness on the part of the Canadian government, the US government and of NATO where they have no regard for international law, for the sovereignty of nations, uh, for the right of people to set their own path of development. So Canadians have really been misled all along the way that this uh, war had to do with development and rights of women and so on. So, you know, just one statistic, which is that the that majority of children in Afghanistan are, are suffering permanent, permanent harm as a result of malnutrition. So far from improving the lives of the people, this uh, war has done terrible, terrible, terrible damage to the people of Afghanistan. And really this Harper government needs to be held to account for it. So, you know, one of our banners here says, Harper resign now. So we really, you know, this movement is developing all over the country. That uh, not only must Harper resign, and not only do we need to, to uh, get rid of this Harper dictatorship, but that the people themselves have to, have to establish what, what, uh, path they want for our society and develop their own independent agenda, including the agenda of fighting for an anti-war government and for people's empowerment. Thank you. Some now minutes have to be like we're going to read the previous minutes. beautiful day and uh, we're happy that Afghan Afghanistan has been liberated from Stephen Harper. Now we just need to be liberated from Stephen Harper. Yeah. Why should we be liberated from Stephen Harper? He's a menace to man and beast and some women as well. So what should people do if they're concerned about what's going on with the government? They should get off their asses and do something. Oh, sorry, I should, they should get off their seats and do something. So there's lots of little things that can be done. Like you can come and stand out on a beautiful sunny day and talk about the issues that uh, we should all be concerned about as citizens and not leave it to the government to decide for us, but get involved ourselves. Make sure our voice is heard above the traffic. I have two sons and I'm seeing the Harper government uh, develop more and more towards a pro-war policy. It comes from high youth unemployment, increased military expenditures, increased intervention in other countries' affairs, especially now as I'm watching them ramp up for a war in Ukraine. And I don't want my sons to have the lack of opportunity that will compel them to become involved in the military and sent to war to die in Ukraine or any other place where the mostly American corporate-led foreign policy of Canada has become increasingly towards an interventionist, warlike, aggressive, militarized economy and policy. Well, I'm here to um, tell the Harper government that this we should not be involved in in 
Ukraine and we're and, we, and we have, our home, troops just came home. Troops that came home from Afghanistan, we should treat them fairly. We shouldn't be at the Ravina in the first place. But now that they're home, let's keep them home and, and not put them anywhere else. Stay out of Ukraine, stay out of everywhere. Ignore convention in, in other countries' affairs. Because the people of Afghanistan are worse off today than no they were before the war in Afghanistan. Because the people of Afghanistan are worse off today than they were at the beginning of the war. In fact, in Afghanistan today, there's more schools than there ever have been, and they're empty. In Afghanistan today, Afghanistan is now a country that imports wheat from Pakistan, and it used to be a country that produced and exported its own wheat. So the Afghani people are now more destitute than they ever have been, and Canadian soldiers are missing limbs, and it was all for nothing. Absolutely. It's a good one today. What makes it so good? The sunshine and the response of the people. We're going to get rid of this warlord government here in Canada before you know it. You sound very optimistic. I am absolutely optimistic because when you meet the people, the people are not in favor of war. They're not in favor of the continuation of war or the invasion of other countries.